So anyway, this idea came about that we should start putting together some stuff within a chapter of how to fix things. So we're trying a little different where it's more hands-on and, you know, more for people that, you know, maybe they've seen, you know, a bunch of YouTube videos, but they just haven't taken that step because they're like, yeah, that YouTube video is a little different than this one, it's a little different than this one because I know I've done that. And if I take five of them and put them together in my head, I've got probably one good one. But maybe there was something missing from the five. So, so basically with brakes, you know, they're really important. They're kind of like tires, you know. You can't do much without them. Well, you can do something for one time without them. So, uh, so we thought brakes would be our first one and maybe our next one will be, um, I don't know, fluid change and stuff like that because there's a lot of fluids in our cars that should be changed on a regular basis and some do, some don't. So, so anyway, Tom is our former president and I called him up and he graciously accepted the challenge of leading us today. So Tom has uh, put together a good basic uh, chart of, of what we should do in general. And we had a couple of meetings amongst some of us here, you know, and, uh, and so he's gonna sort of distill that and we'll get going. So, Mr. Tom. All right. All right. You know, I am not an ACE certified mechanic. I just got ran motored into this. <laughs> um, basically on, on my cars, the only thing I've ever really done is I've never changed the brakes on mine. I've done brake fluid crush several times to run in on the track and things like that. But back in the day, I used to race in one of the Ford and I changed the brakes there frequently. So we shall get started. As you can see, Liz, uh, everybody's got one of these, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't, I've always used just, you know, regular old floor, floor jacks and jack stands and sit on my butt in the garage or on the driveway and, and start jacking a corner up at a time or a half of the car at a time. So what we've, uh, everything's been jacked up. The uh, real uh, lug nuts have been loosened. Mm -hmm. So yeah. first step is to start taking them apart. Where's the... Uh... If you have, if your your car's been retrofitted and you have studs, it's maybe a little bit more secure. But if you just got the regular old bolts, um, you, you the last one you kind of take take care in removing it to uh, take the wheel off. Been off lately? Nope. Oh. Yeah, yeah, so let's put this behind it and then get that two pounder. There you go. Yeah. Oh yeah. Did it. Yeah, you can turn it right there. Yeah. All right. What 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 I do? What I do on my my cars? Uh, I clean this up and I'll take some anti seize and and smear around there to, and I I don't have any more problems. It's it's easy to do. So always take a picture before you take your brakes apart because you'll want to see how all the springs and clips and stuff go. And the time to remember is not after you have them in your hand in the pile. So take, use your phone and, and take a picture. Because those springs. You got a spring here. On the one side here, you've got you got the um, wear sensor. And there's just one wear sensor on the uh, on the front and one on the rear. There's not one on all four. Right. <laughs> hang on, hang on. What do we got here? I got to just unclip that one. They're little plastic clips that are holding the wire in the proper routing. If you don't have any wear sensor, you can just cross them together. <laughs> Just for fun. Yeah. And so it may wear one side out and the other one mm -hmm. very lower. So part of what we do today is make sure you can put some different on top of the so that Now the uh, the wire connects up into a little box here that has the connector of coming from the rest of the car into here. 
and these tend to get kind of brittle over time too so kind of like take take care in plugging them okay I'll get okay try the six and see if that's right or if we need the uh, five six and seven. so are we replacing the pads and rotors today yes yeah and and we're gonna do lines too right Oh, oh. Engine swap. Um, yeah. Your wheels. There's a little screw that goes and holds the rotor to the hub. Put in the tool. You're going to want to. Uh, there you go. That hold. You give it a tap with the hammer to make sure the tool is in there all the way, the hex, and also... Ah, good. You hear the, the drying. Just a little screw. Yeah. With, if those get you can replace them, they don't cost much. You can get them online or something like that. Fun fact, you don't need to use those. What's that? You technically don't need those because well, yeah, te te technically the bolts are holding the uh, so the one, disc to the hub. You can always. Uh, Germans, they like to over. But it'll fall off. The road will fall off. So. <laughs> All right. Then we're gonna take out the spring. No. Yeah. Ah, there we go. I hate this. <laughs> 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 All right, that's where we're at so far. Does uh, make me happy, okay? <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, these these plastic caps are what cover up the head of the the bolt that the uh, shaft that the uh, caliper moves on. So these are real important. You get dust and grit in there. That's going to impede the uh, ability of the caliper to move back and forth on that bolt. Before I take this off. <clears throat> Are we going to replace the uh, brake lines? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know what we were going to do. Might that be easier to do with the, the caliper sitting here? Mm, probably. Yeah. Maybe you get more torque on it. Yeah. So there's, there's a, the one end's on the caliper, the other end's on this bracket here. And that's, that's the, uh, what I'm, with the screw, what the uh, nut is on is on the, the hard line. Nathan brought these uh, doggy diapers. <laughs> They're really, they're really going to work out well today. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's amazing. Okay, old brake line. Oh, yeah, that thing's got about as much flex as my back. <laughs> I hope all these jokes make it in there, Neil. <laughs> Every single one. Yeah, I forgot to mention the other thing about our session today is that we just want to have fun. I mean, it's a but uh, you, you can make fun of, of my age. Uh, once it's done, he's got a... Uh, Watch out. Yeah. Probably going to squirt, yeah, squirt out some uh, right fluid. Induction pipes and stuff like that in the process. You would not see it on these cars. So. Yeah, the piston is easy. Oh, thank you. So what Tom's doing is that caliper is, is kind of semi-frozen. So he's using a seat clamp to push the piston in and it'll give us more clear. Making a mess, aren't we? And more fluid. And more fluid. <laughs> this is going to cost me pizza. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we got the piston. This is the inside. And you can see the, the clip fits in there, and I guess it's pretty much welded. 
pretty much corroded in there so and then uh, the outside pad here it slides off this way okay well let's see let's see how much uh, how much you got on there nothing wow oh, oh you got your money's worth out of these bad boys <laughs> But look at they're even. This is very important. Yeah. The even wear is good. You know, if you got like the top is, is seriously got more than the bottom, then that means you're you've got uneven wear and it means it probably you want to check the, the bolt that uh, the caliper slides on because it means it's not all on your way. Okay, these are these are the two bolts here that the uh, piston moves on. So they'll need to be cleaned up. Cleaned up real good. And uh, on the videos I looked at, there were a couple different. Most people wanted to put some of the uh, lubricant on them. Um, one said, well, it's not recommended, but I do it anyway. <laughs> and um, we probably want to clean up, clean up the caliper here. Um, Clean, clean those holes here, which is what the, the bolt floats in. Make sure they're good and clean so you're not picking up any crud or anything to it. And um, I think yeah. probably the piston will go in there a little bit further. Oh yeah, it'll go in there. Yeah. We'll wanna, so we'll wanna, get, wanna thing, get it right? seated well in there rather than fighting with trying to get the uh, new thicker pad in there. <coughs> so normally that's hanging off of something. Yeah, usually it would be hanging off of here. That's right. Yeah. Another thing, when, when we go to put this all back together, you want to make sure we don't put any, um, any of the brake fluid, any of the lubricant that we're going to use on, on the brake pad surfaces or the new rotor because that they generally are not real compatible. So. These are always really tight. You want to break the bar? You missed that one video. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to clean that up? Prop and depress brake pedal slightly. Okay, we, we have new calipers, right? I mean, new rotors, yep. New rotors. Yeah, I, I would, I would, you got a wire brush? We, we need to I do. clean all this up. You may want to take the opportunity to look at everything else down in here, the suspension parts. There is a, uh, and I'm not really prepared to say if it's consequential or not, but if you look in here, this uh, boot is this cracked. boot here is cracked. Yep, new control arm. Right, right in yep. here. You can see you can see it better from over here. You're gonna want to retract the piston all the way down. Oh yes. You're gonna because it's still sticking out and your new pads are gonna be like yeah. So that's where your C clamp comes in, or I can use a smaller one. Yeah. Some mayonnaise C's around the hub. So the next time you have to take the brake and the wheel off, it'll come off without a hammer. Because it makes Yeah, B46 port. You may not want to use a hammer otherwise, you know, so. The question is, going to thread it the brake line. Seal. Up on there. Z4 with the hard top. 
So they only made one hard stop ever. Yeah. We'll just snug it up and once we get everything else on it'll What did y'all claim that right? These screws here that hold the frame on are should be torqued to, torque to 81 foot pounds. All right, we got that in. Brake pads and and the um, the new sensor also. So on Nathan's getting to Tom that just that the word on brake pads and some of you guys may know this, but okay, we're gonna we're gonna put some nice some some okay. lubricant. Yeah. Very little yeah. What we're, it, we're gonna put some lubricant here on the um, slides. Slide parts. What is that you're putting on? It's a, it's a lubricant. The the inner pad has, has clips on it that holds it into the caliper. Yeah. Ooh, baby. All right. Okay. There's like like you saw. There's a a grommet on the um, brake line, and it's it doesn't slide. It's there permanently. So that ensures that you've got the right amount of uh, slack in the tubing for for steering. And the the bracket is is on the shock tower. Cable here. There's a little, the little bump here. That's the part that goes towards the pad. That's what, if you get down to it, that starts to wear off and make the, make contact. Okay. The, the 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 connectors are the connector for the sensor. I mean, it's it's keyed in there. There's a a slot in one and a protruding spline in the other, and then it just snaps right back into this little junction box there. The guys on the video just snapped in into place. There you go. All right. So you, you want you want to make sure these little clips are are firmly into the holes there.
it's it's uh, opening the circuit, and when it comes down, it closes the circuit, and it tells you I'm low on brakes. Brake fluid. <laughs> That's the orange thing. The orange yeah. thing. Yeah, it's like a float. So it's kind of simple. You know, you don't have to make everything hard. So. But this is nice. The plastic's in great shape. Sometimes I get yellow and nasty looking. So let's put some rags around that guy, just in case uh, we get jittery. Now, if you were not changing your brake lines and you had your reservoir full and your brake were really um, worn like these were, you would probably want to start with the reservoir and suck some of it out. Yeah. Because when you go to push those pistons back in, you it's going to raise... Much, you saw how much fluid came out of the piston. Yeah. So you... Uh, we didn't do it because of the way things worked out today, but in a normal thing where you're not changing brake lines because that's different, we don't normally do that. You would basically extract some of the fluid out of the reservoir and then you push your pistons back in and that's actually going to move the, the level of the reservoir up. Then you're going to want to take it out again because there's no sense in pouring good brake fluid on top of bad brake fluid. You just, you know, so take as much of the old stuff out as you can and then put the new stuff in and it's just less, you know, you need a channel lock for that? This is a, this is a, like a little vacuum pump. So you take this piece and you put it on the bleed valve. Every caliper has a bleed valve. You have to, and the caliper has, and we'll do it on this one next, but I'm just sort of giving you a preamble. So there's a little cap, a dust cap. You have to take off the bleed valve so no dirt gets in there. Then this happens to be a nine millimeter wrench. So you open it a crack. You don't have to take the thing out. You do not want to take the thing out. You open it up maybe a third or half. And now you can let fluid go through the bleed valve, okay? So you put this on top of the bleed valve. This is rubbery. And you're gonna use this and it sucks the fluid. So it's gonna suck the fluid through the, uh, through the line, the, the, the flexible line in the metal line and in the lines that go up to the master. When you get no air bubbles, then you're in good shape. It, you, that's why it uses a, a clear tube, so you don't want any air bubbles. Air bubbles, bad news, you know an air bubble. And the excess fluid goes in this little canister. Okay, I thought I did something. So we'll give it a shot, see how it works. All right, so. Bombs on the kit. This seems to be a good fit, the way this is uh, this is fitting. If I see a lot of tiny, tiny bubbles, then it means that there's a little bit of an air gap in the threads, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. So I'm going to open it, and we should start seeing something through there. It'll be a minute, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, because it was dry. I saw this. We still should keep it on the fluid level too. Yeah, because it, it should be sucking just air out of there again. There we go. See all that air? See how it's coming in a... It's not steady. There's all that stuff. Wake up! And it's also... Well, I don't know what color it is. It's kind of a, a tan color. What color was the fluid? Was it bluish? It should be yellowish. Yellowish? Okay. iPhone. Thousand and one uses. I'm just gonna shut it for a second. Alright, let me turn it again. We still got stuff in there, guys? Okay. Yeah, I think we're just getting fluid. So I, I, while I'm tightening it, I'm continuing to pump so that no air can go back in. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to do that. A little longer, you'd... <laughs> the moment of truth is about to unfold.
After years in the making. Watch your feet. Does the brake work? Slowing me down. <laughs> <laughs> Slowing me down.